Good morning. It's Tuesday, January 12th, 2016. This is Tech Talk Today, episode 229. Believe it or not, my name is Chris. And I'm Angela. Hello, Angela. Good morning. Hello. Hello. So guess what? We have a lot to cover today. So I've pulled out a couple of uh, just like two interesting stories from CES. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're going to discuss some of the T-Mobile stuff that developed in the last week. And then there's been a ton of interesting Netflix stuff, including Netflix is basically going into total world domination mode. They're going like everywhere except for Syria and China. Is it like the secret code thing that they're doing? Oh, I, I have I have a tip about that too. Okay. Everybody knows about the secret code. I know, right? It's, it's not weird. So, it's it's a ploy. I don't know. It is, let's talk. We're going to talk okay. about the secret code right. too. Uh, yeah, there's there's browser extensions. <laughs> I have a website I was using last night, and I found a whole bunch of great new movies using the secret codes. <laughs> I really did. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about that too. But uh, before we get into all of that, we got to bring in the real commentators of the show, our mumble room. Time appropriate greetings, mumble room. Hello. 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 Hello, guys. So uh, let's start with uh, what to me feels like a big publicity stunt. Let's see at the end of the video if you can guess who the publicity stunt is for. There'll be a little quiz. Uh, so this is our first story from CES. Uh, from uh, Now, by the way, this is not me reporting. I don't know, Ange. I just wanted to make this clear just in <laughs> case people are listening on the audio feed. This is not actually me speaking. This is a Bloomberg report. I just wanted to make that clear in case you thought I was at CES right now. I know that's tricky. We're here at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas and just witnessed a somewhat unusual event. At a booth showing a hoverboard-like product, federal marshals showed up and seized all of the merchandise within the booth, took down all the signs, and carted it away. The manufacturer, a Chinese company, was accused of infringing on the patent of One Wheel, a startup that introduced a very similar product a couple years ago at the show. One Wheel says this company essentially just made its product and started selling it for cheaper. And having it here at the show damages its reputation. We have patents uh, both in the US and internationally on on both the design and the function of One Wheel. And so um, we engaged our IP lawyers because um, we heard that there were going to be knockoffs of the One Wheel product appearing at CES. so, all right, Angela, I'll let you go first. Who do you think this is an ad for? It's an ad? I think it is. I think it's a message. I think it's sending a message. You, okay. you raid a booth at CES, and then there's a news report about it. They check off all the boxes. They say, okay, so... I don't even know where to even begin. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. even know where to Okay, no, that's to fair. That's, that's but, fair. You don't know. That's fair. I, I, so, I'm just putting it out there. Let's see. Uh, chat room. All right, chat, chat room, go ahead. Anybody in the chat room have an idea? Who is this an ad for? Mumble room. Anybody in the mumble room have an idea? Who is this an ad for? It's not Microsoft, right? Nope. Okay. Intel, that's funny. That's a call back to the pre-show. Uh, okay. Nobody's going to get it, really? It's... it's. Uh, okay. All right. Fine. Fine. Here, I'll pull the... Pl- all right, so it is, if you think about it, if you think about it, think about the optics, as they Not say. All the signs oh, 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 TSA? The manufacturer, a no. Chinese company. So the manufacturer, a Chinese company, they tear down all the signs. It's a somewhat unusual event. At a booth showing a hoverboard-like product. In a public setting at a CES convention at the trade show floor. Federal marshals showed up and seized all of the merchandise within the booth. With cameras there, uh, the the press is there already in oh. front of everybody. It's sending a message that the U.S. government is going to crack down on patent violations and IP trade. And if you want to do business in the U.S. of A., you've got the strong arm of the FBI and federal agents mm. behind you. That's what so, I think it is. I think it is because why couldn't they have just done this once these people packed up their booth and as they're leaving? Or why couldn't they have done this when they were back at their offices in the U.S.? Or why couldn't they have done this at the time they arrived at CES. Or, or yeah, or prevent the booth from being approved as, as a... And if they came from China, as they were flying in from China, right? Right. So why, why was it that they had to do it once the booth was all set up, once the product was being demonstrated? If they came there with all of the gear to show, with intent to set up a booth, that's your evidence right there. It is a public demonstration. It's a display at a huge public event. Mm. And then they happen to just have an interview with the actual company and uh, with the guy behind con- it. And of course he says... And internationally on, on both the design and the function of one wheel. And so um, we engaged our IP lawyers because... We engaged our IP lawyers. So there, you know, this small startup here in California is safe because they have an IP lawyer and they engage with their IP lawyer and then the next thing you know, they have the strong arm of the United States government protecting their innovation. So come do business here in the U.S. of A. I mean, maybe I'm being a little uh, cynical, but I think... uh, 
Right, well, yeah, I was going to say, like, do you have the bacon, bacon frying sound? Uh, the bacon there? frying? No, I mean, we could do that. I also have... Uh, I have a- if there's a need for a rescue mission, <laughs> and the world is threatened, and the world needs help, it calls on America. It calls on America. <laughs> so it's not Jumba's local plumber. And that's the story. Yeah, that's my theory, at least. Because uh, otherwise, why do it in such a public way? Why have an interview set up right with the... Uh, with yeah. the business owner, why mention the fact that they're a Chinese manufacturer? You know, all that stuff. Well, and does and was, does One Wheel have a booth there? That well, they seemed like they did because they were at the convention, but I don't know. Were, but did they? Now we're discussing them, so, so I don't want to give like, them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, all right, let's move on to something though that actually was pretty neat uh, for I think our audience that came out at CES this week. This is what I'm excited about, and this is what Angie's going to be really mad about. Uh, Intel has a next generation NUC. It's going to have a quad core uh, in it. It's going to have the Iris Pro graphics, Thunderbolt three. And it's going to have Skylake CPUs. This thing's going to be a monster of a NUC with USB 3.0 ports. Thunderbolt 3 is going to be is going to be amazing for production. Wait, so why am I going to be mad? Because I'm buying one. I'm going to. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not shipping yet, so don't worry. We got a while. Uh, but uh, Intel has dropped the mini HDMI port as well. Because so the now, NUC is working out really well right now, right? No, that's we have one no, running 24 seven. It right used there. to be right here. And then you have one that runs all of your s 24 seven. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. So we have one there, and okay. we have one there, okay. and I think we have one more somewhere. So uh, why do we need another? Well, so this is the thing, is my machine upstairs is, do you remember a long time ago when I built a Hackintosh to do... Uh, yes. Well, I built another Hackintosh. I think as it's a, still in the garage. I built another Hackintosh as a backup, right? Yeah. Well, that's been my main workstation since then, uh, since I took it out of production. So I ran it as a Hackintosh for a couple of years and took it out of production. Now for a couple of years, it's been my workstation. So it's about five years old. So now I'm thinking I could replace this huge Hackintosh machine. Wait, with the one nu- that Bella was pressing the power yeah. button on repeatedly? Yeah, yeah that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and wow. Can, yeah, but here's the other thing I like. From a production standpoint now, they have full-size HDMI ports. No more adapters Great. to do. Yeah, that's going to be really nice. Uh, they, they're going to take DDR4 RAM instead of DDR3, so you're going to have faster memory-dependent tasks, which is nice since it has an integrated GPU and also has PCI Express 3.0, uh, so you're going to have more bandwidth for the uh, PCI SSDs, which are already crazy fast. Uh, and the most interesting NUC data Intel shared was something it wasn't ready to really show yet. It's a brand new kind of NUC in a redesigned case. It'll offer other performance above and beyond Core i7 Broadwell NUCs that were released last year. The box is currently codenamed Skull Canyon and will feature a 45 watt quad core Skylake CPU with Iris Pro graphics, which in the Skylake generation means 72 execution units and 128 megabytes of RAM for the graphics. The box will also include Thunderbolt 3 port, which Intel says can be used for data. Or external graphics. Oh man! Now it's uh, going to be targeted at gamers and workstation users, people who can't usually use mini PCs. That's me. I don't know when we're going to see it though. There's no pricing or availability yet, but the Nux have been generally pretty low priced. Mini PCs in terms of power, not size. Yeah, well, like those ones, like that Nux right there. It's that's to- it's totally it runs totally maxed out doing that job over there all mm-hmm. the time, but mm-hmm. it, it barely does it. But this would really kind of this would be a whole nother step up, and cool. the, you can get really fast small drives in it. This these nucs are really getting seriously nice, um, and so I really think now you could you're in this next generation you're gonna be able to get something pretty fantastic, uh, and they have super fast drives. <laughs> you just said that. I know. I just I really I really because right now that machine up there I have I have an SSD and then I have three spinning disks and it's just like spinning disks are just so slow. It's like it's miserable. I love them because they're ten thousand RPM spinning disks. So they're like the fastest you can get. They're not the fastest, but they're pretty fast. Mm-hmm. But it's still just painful. And I run them in a RAID zero. <laughs> and it's still too slow. Uh, all right. Anybody got a knuck in the mumble room? Anybody knucking it up? <laughs> nope. This is me. this is a great little custom rig that you can put together right off of Amazon. You can buy all the parts, just make sure you get the right RAM, the right voltage. And you can, you know, for four hundred dollars, if you don't need dedicated graphics. You have a really great machine. Well, now if they can have this new NUC around $400, $300, with the Thunderbolt 3 port, you'll be able to do external graphics. So you could actually have really nice dedicated gaming graphics as well. So, yeah. Uh, Jumba, are you in? Is Jumba in there? Is he in the uh, mobile He's in the IRC. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. Yeah, he's talking to me like he's in the mobile. I don't know what he's going to go. Here's another thing that uh, I think is going to be the go-to gadget for 2016. HTC Vive pre-orders are starting on February 29th. So this is the big alternative for the Oculus Rift. I like this hardware a lot. I like their I like their setup, and I like that they're working with Valve on this. So I think this is pretty cool. On February 29th, and I think they're actually going to end up shipping before the Oculus. 
So this is going to be the big VR headset, Ange. Hmm. We're going to see. The HTC Vive pre-order on February 29th. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. All right, I want to talk about uh, <laughs> this guy. Yep. Mm, this guy, Ange. You know what? I'm not going to dignify that with an answer. Let's just Except get into it. he did, and he stepped in some doo-doo. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> T-Mobile CEO has been responding to the building criticism that people are coming to when they look at the Ben John service. And the EFF came out and did an analysis and said, look, they are just straight up forcing connections to run worse if they're not a Binge On member. And when they are a Binge On member, they're automatically downscaling, and it's turned on by default, and it is affecting all video. It is deep packet inspection. Like, this is, there's a lot of questions here. And so the CEO T-Mobile, uh, the T-Mobile CEO, went to Twitter uh, to sort of set the record straight and respond directly to the people. So what, what Binge On does, it includes a proprietary technology, and what the technology does is not only detect the video stream, but select the appropriate bit rate to uh, optimize to the video, the mobile device. And he claims that, uh, he claims that that is not uh, a, uh, what the EFF said. The EFF is saying, well, that is, you are scaling down, you are doing packet inspection, you are sometimes interrupting the feed to get this, the content sender to automatically lower their bit rate. Like, you are doing a lot of little tricks. And like, well, no, 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 it's not that. It's, it's proprietary technology. That's, that's cool. And, uh, it includes a proprietary technology. And what the technology does is not only detect the video stream, but select the appropriate bit rate to uh, optimize to the video, the mobile device. That's part A of my answer. Part B of my answer is, who the fuck are you anyway, EFF? Why are you stirring up so much trouble? And who pays you? I mean, that's pretty bad when you don't know who the, when you're when you're the uh, yeah. CEO of a big company like T-Mobile and you don't know in the telecom space and you don't know who the EFF is. Uh, and so, of course, he's out there making a fool of himself because not only is he technically inaccurate, but he's also showing that he doesn't know who a significant player for consumer rights is. Yeah. He came out later and he apologized. We'll get to that. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen that part yet. Uh, but they do. The FF confirms on January 4th, T-Mobile's binge on optimization is just throttling and applies indiscriminately to all videos. This is what got him all fired up. Yeah. So then later he comes out and he says he apologizes for offending the EFF and its supporters. Um. What a crock. Yeah, I think so. I'm just not liking, I don't even, I cringe at the sound of binge on. Like, it just sound, it just. Here's uh, what I find to be kind of interesting about this story is this guy was sort of known for being like the no BS CEO who was taking a, a, a carrier and he was going to do it differently. And you could trust T-Mobile. It was a brand you could trust. Uh, and now, now you start to see that he's just another business guy with, with another gimmick. And. I think he kind of I think he kind of lost like, a lot of credibility with yeah. this whole thing. Well, and you don't have that video of of him wearing pink and and describing the service and swearing. Uh, I did, I almost put it in here, but yeah, I yeah. It's we, okay. It probably would have gotten us taken down anyway. But but the, if the video, did. you guys should go just look at, listen to it. He he, he tries to sound sincere and yeah, it's the like Donald Trump style. It's why it's the same. Yeah. It's that same. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's just like. And the thing oh. is, is what he, so there, what what appeals about what appeals about the T-Mobile CEO and Donald Trump is people are really sick and tired of the overly corporate or political speak, where everything is 1984 yeah. and you talk you talk in a certain way and you only you are very guarded about how you forecast about the future. And all big companies are really awful about that. So when somebody comes out and says the S word and they just say, you know, this person's an idiot, they don't know what they're talking about. It's refreshing because you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you, you, I agree. Yeah, and you're speaking my level. So there is an appropriate place for that. That's why I think podcasting is actually fairly successful. But uh, but then you can also leverage it to take advantage of people who wouldn't expect you to lie in that way. Right. And that's what he does. Yeah. Yeah. He carefully crafted what he said. And yeah, it's just. Mm -hmm. Number of many thoughts on the whole T-Mobile binge on stuff. Anybody want to take an opposite position? The floor is open to you. You are welcome to. It's well, I. Well, go I heard about. Go ahead, Hammond. Then we'll no, go ahead, Hammond. Then we'll we'll go to. Is that WW? I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I heard everything, and I agree with all you, what you guys say about the CEO. I'll, on the other hand, too, is I just read an article this morning, and people were saying that they uh, had issues that were lasting a week and possibly two weeks. They emailed the CEO. He personally responded, and he uh, personally dealt with their issue. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you, there's no way to really know if that's the CEO, uh, right? It could be a team of people that are, are, are able to write on his behalf. We don't really, that's true. you know, because the same, same has been said about Steve Jobs and Tim Cook. Um, I just and you know some are hit and miss, but yeah, it, that is nice. And he has a style to him, that's for sure. Okay, WW, go ahead. I, I wanted to let you get your point in. It's just like the EEF is not funded by some like crazy right wing group. It's funded by people who care about technology, who are willing to donate time and money, and people on the, even who who care about this and aren't tech savvy can donate to the EFF and support what they're doing and get informed and it's like this guy just doesn't get it it's not just like some crazy right-wing conspiracy or something no these are people who care about this and who care about net neutrality yeah that a lot of which might be more decades. likely to use t-mobile right because they're they're looking for a better deal or they they want to get an unlocked gsm device so a lot of you know T-Mobile has a, probably a lot of crossover with people who are EFF packers, <laughs> kind of ironically. Uh, I, why don't we why don't we shift over to AT and T? A lot of people have been pointing this story my direction this week, so I think it's worth talking about. AT and T is bringing back unlimited data plans, comma, for <laughs> Directv and Uverse subscribers. So that sounds like. T-Mobile, like Ben John. Uh, so what? Well, so what it is is uh, so now AT and T owns Direct TV. Or is it Comcast? Who is it that's doing like the? No, it's like it's T-Mobile. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here's what it is: is there, these are the same company now, and uh, so if you get a Uver, if you get a Uverse or Direct TV oh. package, then you are eligible for an unlimited data plan. Wow. Now it's unlimited data for anything though. It's across the board unlimited data. This actually, if you ha if you need TV service, their Direct TV stuff is Direct TV. I've actually considered getting for for my place, but I'm not doing it. But it, I looked at it because one of the things that's nice about it is they're now pretty much letting you stream the entire service over the internet, so you don't actually have to have a physical dish anymore. Oh, nice. Yeah. Huh. So, so and you can have it on your. You can also have it on mobile devices. That makes sense. Yeah, and they have like a DVR up in the cloud. So you get that combined with unlimited AT and T data, that's not such a bad deal. Uh, but you uh, you know you're you're going to be in for quite a bit of money because the unlimited data costs a hundred dollars per month, which is actually cheaper than any other large carrier unlimited data plan right now. Uh, but then of course you have to add a device that's like forty bucks a month, and then of course you also have to have a two year contract on TV for Direct TV or Uverse. And if you're already a subscriber, you can just get you can already, you already can get this. But if you're not a subscriber, you're gonna have to get a contract to get the Direct TV service. So there's definitely some hoops you have to jump through. Mm -hmm. But if you jump through those hoops, you get unlimited data on one of the nation's largest wireless networks. Wow. And people have been talking about it this week. A lot of people, a lot of people. But there's definitely some hoops to jump through. So just make sure you uh, follow them. Speaking of jumping through hoops, Netflix is blowing up, you guys. It is blowing up. Netflix is going to 200 countries. Pretty much, Netflix is going everywhere. Uh, it's now available in 190 countries. It's launching 130 new countries immediately. Wow. Yeah, they're pretty much going everywhere except for Syria and China, essentially. Uh, they're going all in on this. It is like Netflix uh, worldwide global freaking domination. Uh, you know, as Reed Hastings was saying on the stage, this is the birth of a global television network. Now what? Yeah, absolutely. Now it's just to see if the people in those 130 countries are willing to subscribe to Netflix. Right. So the question will become, is Netflix going to be the worldwide TV service? Do you think if this could be it? Are we going to finally see the real cord-cutting the cut, cut, cord cutting worldwide company that is like the same service for everybody? I mean, think about the infrastructure well, they have to build. It's not up. the same service for everybody, right? Don't, well, isn't I guess, there a, pr a problem between like Canada and the United States? There, there is different. There is different content. I guess that's one of the things that they say they're working on is they're going to try to make it the same content everywhere. And then what? So is everything going to be in English? Or I mean, like they're going to. You know, so what? I think a big part of their plan is is they're going to create more original content and they're going to shoot it in different languages. Wow. Yeah. I'm okay with this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anybody in the mumble room do the Netflix account sharing thing? Anybody like share passwords among family members or friends? So you can be honest because you're semi anonymous. Come on, somebody in there must. Ange and I do it. <laughs> we do. We share a we share a Netflix account. Well, we, I have a profile. Yeah, it's technically my Netflix account. Yeah. I've had it since like Netflix was a thing. Uh, yeah, look at the chat rooms admitting Imacon does it. Jumbo. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Well, you have to like we have to pay for multiple screens. Well, here's the thing: the Netflix CEO himself says he's okay with account sharing. Wow. 
He says he's okay with it because he feels like people, once they go out on their own and really want to get into it, they have to get their own account anyways. We love people sharing Netflix, whether they're two people on a couch or ten people on a couch. That's a positive thing, not a negative thing. Yeah. Well, and, like, if you want, like, the suggestions to be accurate, you know, like... Yeah, you want your Nanny own profile. Nanny Jenny was yeah. watching Grey's Anatomy and all sorts of S yeah. on mine, and I'm and like... by the way, you're welcome. I noticed that Abby was logged into your Netflix profile on her iPad, so I switched it back to the oh, kids' profile. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Uh, as kids move on in their life, he says, they like to have control of their life, and as they have an income, we see them separately subscribe. It yep. really hasn't been a problem, he says. Yeah. That's a really good way to think about it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so bureaucratic, you know. Yeah, it, it is like him not overreacting. Yeah, and you do have to pay more than extra for more than two screens. Yeah, Rakai is absolutely right. It, having your personal Netflix account is worth it for the recommendations alone. And I agree. My recommendations are just completely out of whack because of Jenny. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah, completely. And the kids probably too. Yeah, the kids accidentally dabble in there. So, yeah. so while we're talking about Netflix... There is this Netflix codes thing going around, mm-hmm. and there's like browser extensions to take advantage of it. How did you hear about it? There's whole websites dedicated to it. Um, you know Facebook. Oh yeah, sure. I just saw it on Facebook that there's secret codes that unlocks a bunch of genres. So I'm I've been playing around with uh, NetflixCodes.me. If you guys want to check it out, NetflixCodes.me. And what they've done is, of course, so Netflix has their automatic recommendation, their you know their slidey panel thing when you're doing the instant streaming. But it's like, I have a hard time processing like all of that. Like, I feel like I want to always keep looking because something better might crop up. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I never right? stop looking. And then you're like, okay, remember to go back to page three. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, there's to, something I, on there that I Or I, I try to open up another tab and it automatically starts playing. Right. Does anybody in the mumble room have this problem? You know, like the whole UI on the Netflix streaming is no good. It's no good. So this helps a lot. It's called Netflix Secret Codes. And it's because, of course, Netflix has done this. They've all broken it down into other categories, like really, really like subgenre categories. So you have like just for the anime ca- category, anime action, anime comedies, anime dramas, anime fantasy, anime, anime features, anime horror, anime sci-fi, anime uh-huh. series, right? And then it, like my favorite, of course, you've got classic sci-fi, cult sci-fi, classic dramas. Oh wow, that really is great. Yeah, because I actually I didn't click on the link or anything, but like there's a certain type of horror movie that I like to watch. Well, and like I was thinking. Uh, you know, maybe like Hadi and I would want to watch a romantic comedy, right? So, I was, oh, look, you can go right to this category right here. And uh, you go, of course, and I'm going into my profile. And then it's, these are just the romantic comedies. And you can sort it by what it suggest, suggests for me or based on rating. It's not scrolly, scrolly, side to side. It's just the raw list Fantastic. Here. Yeah. Fantastic. And you can, you know, he really wants me to watch Cuban Furry. I don't know. What, oh, Fury. Fury. Oh, oh, Fury. <laughs> Furry. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, th- that's really cool because then I went like and I, I wanted to see like what uh, sci-fi thrillers they had and like you know what kind of hardcore sci-fi does Netflix have for uh, sci-fi and fantasy so I can go right to that code. It's really nice. And you have this link in the show notes. I do. It's also NetflixCodes.me. Okay. Yeah. So there's Galaxy Quest, great show, a great movie. I mean, even for you. <laughs> <laughs> I am like on, jumped on that. So one. there you go. That's, so <laughs> Netflix is Netflix is like becoming the internet's television station. It, it is. It's ours. You know, it's one of the main reasons why we cord cut. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. And you got you got their own. They got your own independent programming. It works on multiple devices, including it works on the Linux, Linux desktop. And now they're basically in a year, they're going to be in every country in the world. Mm-hmm. Just about except for China, which is huge. That's a huge market not to be in. Yeah. But I bet give them a couple of years. They'll, they'll work something out. Uh, so, anyways, you can find out if you have any. Like, I guess there's also like a Chrome extension that'll expose more codes in the in the standard Netflix UI. Uh, you can check all of those out, of course. But if you have a good one, TechTalkToday.reddit.com. Hey, Angela, before we get into the uh, Kickstarter of the week, did you bring a Kickstarter of the week? No. <laughs> oh well, good thing I, I know, got right? a backup yeah, I, one. No, I completely forgot. I actually forgot I was even coming here until like last night later, and I was like, oh yeah, right. Wow. I know. Well, my days are all messed up. I'm just. Yeah. Yeah, it is getting down to the wire for me. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, we are going down tomorrow to do more training. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, so I'm looking at replacing the rover with a, with a newer <laughs> rover, uh, kind of, sort of. And it has been, a, it's just, it is exhausting. So, I, it, and it is. No, I. I it, is the, it is everything that is awful with buying a car. It's all of the car salesman stuff, all of that, and everything that's awful about buying a house. Mm-hmm. 
in, in one experience. I know. And you're trying to jam it in before a fest. Just, of course I am. You know, just like you tried to jam in the, buying the hey, rover before the road trip. This is how you got to do it. You got to. No, gotta, no. You, you yeah. Gotta, oh, yeah. 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 You like feeling this way? You like being stressed and not yeah. knowing what's going to match up? Well, <laughs> like, it, geez. It, make, it keeps things interesting. That's sure. for sure. sure. Oh, man. Well, it'll be it's such a big relief once it's over. But <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. In the meantime, I have learned yeah. so much about diesel engines and uh, uh, like air brakes and all these uh, air suspension, all these things that I didn't ever really know anything about. So that's been interesting. Uh, so yeah, it's exhausting. So tomorrow I'm going to be running down there and then coming back and doing unfiltered. It's going to be crazy, crazy, crazy. So we have a lot of things. That, so not only not only is like that just like personally crazy, but then of course you know while we're getting ready to go to scale, we have to do things like prepare an extra tech snap so that way we don't miss a tech snap while we're on yep. the road. Which reminds me, we need to keep yes, working with Ham because that's getting close. Yep. Uh, and then, you know, we have, uh, of course, all the other little production elements, like I'm getting together all of the stuff I'm taking down there, which uh, hopefully if I do have the larger rig, will be much easier to bring the, the broadcast machine. It won't cost thousands of dollars to ship anymore. Uh, so that could be, you know, all that's like getting ready, getting that put together. Then on top of all of that, we have the regular show load. It has just been, mm -hmm. it is, the, it is the, the, the weeks right before we leave to go on a, on a fast trip or yeah, well, and then crazy the expense of the fest, you know, driving mm -hmm. it's uh twenty six hundred miles round trip. Yeah, That's yeah. Expensive. Thankfully, diesel is like significantly cheaper than gas you know, right now. I was thinking your new rig might actually have better gas mileage than my effing car. Yeah, it might. Yeah. How stupid is that? I yeah. Just you gotta get you gotta get a new beyond vehicle. Beyond angry, I know. Well, I'm st still upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Just like everything else. Well. <laughs> The thing is, is they could get if they could get whatever what's ever costing you on the gas mileage. That'd be really nice. It'd be really nice because it's still yeah. a great vehicle. I know, I know, yeah. I know. That's the only reason why I'd give it up right now. I I can go without the heated seats. I can go without the hands free link. That's fine. Everything else can fail, <laughs> but the gas mileage is just killing me. So before we go too far from scale, we should talk about the meetup. Yes. Just a little bit. Uh, we are working on. Um, Changing the time because we scheduled it right during Cory Doctorow's keynote. Which we were, like, it wasn't announced until, ap like, a week after we started the, Go figure, the meetup. Right? Go figure. But, yeah, so we are. But now I'm trying to decide. See, some people have suggested, well, let's have breakfast before the keynote. But that's really early for a it bunch is. of geeks. It's it like is. 8 a.m. Noah isn't getting in until that morning, right? So that well, We don't know for sure yet. You, you, oh. Yeah, maybe oh. keep on top of him for that, of that okay. for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um. I was thinking lunch, maybe. Yeah. It's tough, though. That's tough. But if Everybody has to eat. Look, everybody has to you know, eat. Everybody is going there knowing that they're going to have to leave the, the convention to go get food. You know, the thing is, is if we did lunch, too, then we could recruit a few people while we're there. We'd be like, yeah, come back with us. Come to well, lunch. There, there's already 20 people coming. I know. Did no. you see that? Yeah, it's gonna, we need a good Although space. it might change if you change the time. Yeah. You know, but still, um, yeah, lunch or, I mean, just. Um, what I want to do is I want to get some footage for the last 400. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to get some there, you know, get, talk to some people and stuff like that. So, oh, everybody, um, last.reddit.com. LinuxActionShow.reddit.com. Just kidding. LinuxActionShow.reddit.com. Yeah. What, what about it? <laughs> I don't know. Go there's there. a scale thread? Well, yes. What? Well, there's a lot of things there. There's also um, the Teespring campaign, I think. I oh, at teespring.com slash last400. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And last400 EU. But also um, ideas. What, what you want to see for last400? Last400 or the 10 year. Yeah, that is really what the big party is going to be. Last right 400 now. is just going to be a blip because I think yes. I want to save my energy for the for the 10th year. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. So as we're talking about looking out into the future and planning and uh, big events coming up and covering all that, we could really use your support over at patreon.com slash today. Thank you, everybody. I posted, I don't know if you did, you see, did you see the recent videos I posted in the, uh, to the patrons? I didn't. Exclusively. Uh, I, uh, I posted uh, the last update when we, before we brought video that. back, mm -hmm. I brought, I gave the update to the patrons first. They got a video post about that. And then um, I asked them at the beginning of the new year what kind of things they'd like to oh, see from yeah, JV. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, and there's a good thread going. There was, yeah, there was a lot of good feedback I was thinking there. you and I should probably go over that. Yes. Again. Yeah. Yes. So we really take their opinion pretty seriously. Patreon.com slash today. You All can support the show. You also get to interact with us in a kind of an extra special way and get some exclusive content. And, once, and the thing is, is if you're not a patron yet and you become a patron, there is a lot of stuff in there now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of content you get access to that isn't published anywhere else. It's pretty nice. Patreon.com. Some of it, it does eventually make it out every now and then, but like the rover logs, of course, but yeah. uh, but most of it doesn't. Patreon.com slash today. And thanks, everybody. 
for supporting the entire network at that page that supports all of the shows. It's like our foundation, and it's a foundation built by our audience. We really appreciate it. All right, Andrews. Check it! Are you ready for the Kickstarter of sure. the week? Yeah. I have failed to convince you guys now for such a long streak that uh, I don't even, I guess I'm a glutton for punishment at this point. I, but I thought this is a nice practical Kickstarter item, and you like practical things. Yeah, like dick candles. Yep, like like the dick candles. Yeah, I guess that was a that was a, you brought that one, didn't you? <laughs> I brought yeah. it. Yeah, you did. Uh, all right, so it is looking for a hundred. Oh, I'm sorry, one hundred thirty thousand dollars in funding. What? It currently has thirty seven thousand dollars in funding with six hundred and two backers. Thirty two days to what go. The heck is this? So they have a long ways to get there. It's called the pace lid. Be prepared for whatever life throws your way. Chris. I teach wilderness medicine, work at Garak Expeditions, and as a mountain guide. I came up with a product that helps you remember your essential equipment as long as you've got a water bottle. I often find myself answering questions about gear and things that people might need for medicine, survival, and navigation. And all the answers presume that you have it with you when you need it, but that's not always the case. This lid attaches to your water bottle in a simple and easy manner that assures that you've got what you need when you need it. In addition to my personal testing, I've had a variety of mountain athletes, military personnel, and parents take this lid into their daily lives and validate its usefulness. The idea with this lid is to add functionality to your pre-existing gear. It's a simple, cost-effective piece of equipment that adds function to gear that you've already got. The lids will be food safe, BPA free plastic produced here in Colorado and distributed out to you as soon as the Kickstarter funds itself. What do you think, Ange? Is that a winning Kickstarter for you? That's a big no. Uh yeah, I the price is uh, ten dollars. Uh, yeah, for ten bucks you get you know nothing really. Hey, we just got a new patron subscriber. Yay, Nels. that's nice. Yeah. Thank you, Nels. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't know. Actually, the price is pretty reasonable. I think if you were out, if you're a freaking outdoorsman, or if like okay, take what if Abby really got into hiking when she was like 15 years old or something? Would would that be something you'd like her to have? Zip zipping pockets. I mean, it, it's just it, what it is. It's a pocket on your water bottle, and nobody likes to carry a water bottle. I think it's 2016's version of I'm not gonna have a fanny pack. I'm not gonna Dude, have a fanny pack. Okay, yeah. I will just, not admit that the fanny pack was useful. I will not admit the fanny pack was useful. Like a coin purse. All you have to do is get a coin purse and one of those little hook thingies. Put it on your belt. Anybody in the mumble room enticed by uh, this hot product that uh, allows you to add convenient storage capacity to your water bottle? All you have to I do think, is remember your water bottle, and you'll have your essentials. I think it'd be good because um, if you're like, I can see this for cycling enthusiasts because they try to keep uh, weight on the body down. So if you have the streamline with a water bottle or something, then this could be good. Um, I think for more outdoors people, it'd be perfect if you're really active in that space. Yeah, I think it could be. I think like for somebody like my dad at the peak of his outdoors meanness. Outdoors me -ness. I know. I'm like, there was a me in there. <laughs> uh, uh, but I also think it's just a feature. I think that unless he has this thing patented some way, uh, there's no reason that a bottle manufacturer isn't just going to see this idea and just do it. Yeah. And then it'll just be, you buy the whole bottle. It'll be an $8.99 bottle. It'll be $8.99 in two years. And but I like the idea, and I like that you can add it to your own bottle. So there you go. There you go. That is the, uh, if you want to back this. You might be able to get on. Actually, the prices are pretty reasonable. It starts at ten bucks. Hmm. So maybe you should have raised the prices, and you'd have more than thirty-seven grand right now because he's going to need a lot more than that. I wonder how they're being manufactured. A lot of interesting questions. It looks like they have actual working prototypes too, which is always very nice. They've actually been using them out in in the real world, uh, and they're deep enough that these guys are putting their keys in there. Mm -hmm. That's kind of nice, actually. Some matches. Look at that. Some cash. You know, you go into the pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Huh. Some Skittles. <laughs> Some m ms I guess. Driver's license ID. Yeah. I mean, your watch. You know, you well, yeah, I'm a naysayer, but then again, I stop carrying my purse most of the time because I have my debit card on, in, yeah. my, in my phone case. So I guess yeah. I'm 
guilty of this type of convenience. But what I, I just, do like about it too is look, he's breaking down how he's going to use the money. That's cool. Yeah, so he'll say this much is going to materials, uh, this much is going to shipping and uh, facility expenditures. He's got a whole time project timeline here all the way up to June. Yeah, Pot Cal Casey says it would be annoying to run and hold, and even more annoying if you just clipped it to you. Well, no more annoying than your water bottle already is. And you really should stay hydrated. I don't know. I think it's kind of a neat idea. I think if uh, I think I'm gadgety enough that if I was big into hiking and going outdoors, I'd 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 buy it. Yeah. For ten bucks. If you're hiking and going outdoors, you have a backpack. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I know. I know, but it, I still like having one spot for all my stuff okay. like that. I don't know. I, <laughs> all right, all right. That closes out the Kickstarter of the week, right there. Kick it! So uh, go out and show them the money. I say, f- I say, fund that one. I say, I declare <laughs> that one gets funded. I'm calling it. No. Can I have a Can I have a success? No, no. Oh, all right, all right. Well, that is going to be our last tech talk today of January. Is it? Is that how that works? Let me take a look so. at that real quick because of the Whoa. scale. Yeah, yeah. Because I won't be here Whoa. next week. Oh, I'll probably be back on your birthday. My birthday. Yeah. Well, that's a thing. I'll probably so the next one might be on my birthday, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. It depends on if I've made it back or not. You never know. I better have. <laughs> I better have. Let's put it that way. Because I'm not really bringing... I don't know. I'll figure that one out. All right. Well, so that'll bring us to the end of this week's episode of Tech Talk today. But help me track down a really kick-butt Kickstarter. Would you? Would you yeah, yeah. But I'll thank you to Chaotic that. Linux for uh, submitting that one. That oh, was, good. That was nice. And he did it over at techtalktoday.reddit.com. I know. I, I really do appreciate that. Because she, she never remembers. She's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna bring a, oh yeah, I'll bring a Kickstarter of the week, and you gotta really blow me away. I, mean, I know, I know. You know, if you if you found something Star Trek or gaming or something like that, you'd probably much, you'd probably pretty much get me. Yeah, I will, I will bring one next time. Next time, so we're 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 gonna stick with Tuesdays. It's just gonna be a couple of weeks because of scale. So it's not like you've missed the recording. It's just that we've had to move it around. Uh, so yeah, all right. So uh, thank you very, th- thank you everybody in the mumble room for joining us today on the show. Hope you stick around uh, because later today we're going to have Linux unplugged, mm-hmm. and I think I'm I'm not sure talking about scale. Jeez, I know a lot of sc- a lot of scale on the mind right now. I guess um, there is some interviews that we played in last this Sunday. I don't know if you saw that we did an interview with the folks from Scale, mm-hmm. and we played it in the feedback segment of last this Sunday, but it was like a 20 minute interview. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have 20 minutes of time in the feedback segment. Right. So we cut about seven, eight, nine minutes out of it. And uh, I'm going to try to go through some of that and maybe play it in Linux Unplugged, see if there was. Because Noah was like, I was, no, cut this down. And he's like, sure. And I was thinking he would go out and like, just leave all the best stuff in. But what, he just kind of like, cut here, cut here, cut, delete. All right, here you go. I'm like, all right, that works. But now, I have to, <laughs> now I'm going to go back and see if I can't mine it for something interesting. So we'll have that in today's Linux Unplugged coming up a little bit later. And so if you join us on Tuesdays now in the Mumble Room, this is what I would do. This is my prescription for you. You show up for Tech Talk today at 9 a.m. Pacific. Go to jblive.tv for that. Go to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash counter to get it converted to your local time. Show up, hang out with us in the Mumble Room and in the chat room. And then you just, just stick around. I'm going to play some old-time radio between now and Linux Unplugged. You just hang out all day. I give you the permission Give you permission to just take the day off, hang out with us, and then join us for Linux Unplugged because they're both audience-fueled shows. Yep. And then next week, Coda Radio on Monday, Angela's special guest co-host, and they may bring in the mumble room for a part of the show. Yep. So it could be a mumble opportunity to go on Coda Radio and talk to Ange and Mike. And Ange, of course, is going to be coming at it from a pretty interesting perspective now, having not only worked in an IT contracting company for years, uh, and then, of course, running the, the business operations here at JB, but of course, now you've been hosting Women's Tech Radio for... Over a year. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of interesting developers and people you've talked to on that show yes, as well. Yes, tons. So I think it should be a pretty interesting Coder, Coder Radio, and uh, there could be a spot for that mumble room, too. Yep. So uh, join them uh, on Monday. You can find all of that on the calendar page. And, of course, if content for this show, stories, news items, Kickstarters, end of show videos, all of that's appreciated over at techtalktoday.reddit.com. Now, we had a super Netflix-heavy show today. Uh, and I, I, I'm almost not even a huge Netflix fan in the sense that I think independent content is... I guess Netflix is independent content when they create their own stuff, though, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess yep. so. I guess they, they are. They're just kind of a new, big, huge form of it, and, and, and maybe the most successful version of it yet. So in that spirit, I say our end-of-show clip should celebrate Netflix and celebrate one of their better series, the next season of House of Cards. See you next week. Or they oh, say in two weeks. we get the leaders we deserve. Well, here's what I think America deserves. A leader who's not afraid to look you in the eye and tell you what he believes. 
I believe in putting people first. I believe in putting America back on track. I believe in opening doors. And I'm willing to work with both sides so that we all get what we want. I'm a humble man. I've never forgotten where I come from. I've taken my licks, but I've never taken your support for granted. I believe in pointing people in the right direction. But in the end, we should all be free to make our own decisions. They say we get the leaders we deserve. I think America deserves Frank Underwood. And in your heart, you know I'm right.